Yes, I made a no. My life. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, everyone. Um, let me invite you to stand. We are going to pray and we are going to release uh, the man of God to do our, our Bible study. So, welcome to uh, our Bible study. Uh, Minister Garfield Robinson is still with us. He's still our teacher for tonight. And so we we are anticipating a great session as usual. Amen. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your many mercies. We thank you for your great faithfulness and your love for us. We commit the session into your hands. We commit our teacher into your hands. And we pray tonight for fresh revelations, Father, that you will speak through him cause that we hear and we'll apply that which we hear. Because that's how your word works, God. When we hear it, we go out and do it. We go out and live it. So we thank you for the session. We thank you for uh, Minister Garfield. And we just commit him into your hands even now. We commit the hearers, those in the house, and those online into your hands. And we just praise you for a wonderful session this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Sir Garfield. Thanks much, Pastor Ray. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, we're here again uh, in the house of the Lord uh, to just spend some time looking in his word. Uh, after... Tonight, we are going to be breaking for a couple of weeks, and then we will do, I think Rev said, two, three more, and then we're done. <laughs> All right? I thought we were done before. <laughs> Rev said we're not done. Okay. Um, We are going to be looking, oh, I, I should just tell you, this should be, all right. After the break, what we're going to be looking at is what I am excited about. We're going to be looking at how to really do Bible study. That's my heartbeat. So we, we're going to look at some principles that when you go to your Bible and plug it in, um, then you're able to, to see the things in the text that the Lord wants you to see. Right? Because guess what? It is the Holy Spirit who, who, who reveals things to us. He's the one who um, illuminates our mind. He's the one who, who, who teaches, who, who, who opens the word to us. But, but we need to learn some exegetical principles that when we plug them in, um, we be able to to see, so we, we approach the scripture with a in an investigative way manner, so that we can ask the right questions and the text yielding the answers to us, right? Like the same hermeneutical question: Who is 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 the text talking about? Who is speaking? What is happening? What did they do? What did they say? Where were they? So all those questions, and we can read the answers. From the text. So it's going to be exciting. Um, there are some. No you have to come. You have to come and we talk about that. So that's after the break. But tonight. Tonight um, we want to share. For a couple of minutes. Um, looking at a theme. That. That all of us. Should. Know. And. Uh, and, and be able to explain. If there is one thing that we should be able to, to grasp and explain is this thing called grace. Hmm? Grace. Essential. Not only is it essential um, for, for, for everyone, I mean for everyone and everything, but it is essential for us to understand it so that we can have a better appreciation for this thing called grace. Father, we ask that you will just make clear this 
teaching to our heart. Move us in the direction that you want us to go. As your servant had prayed earlier. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we want to look on grace and the doctrine of grace. No, we're not going to be doing an exhaustive study uh, because you know the time that we have. However, we will be touching on all the essentials um, of what grace is about. Christian, you ready for me? Okay, Christian is ready for me. All right, so, so let us talk a bit. Um, let us talk a bit. When you hear the word grace, so I want you to talk back to me now. Uh, when you hear the word grace, what comes to mind? Talk to me. When you hear the word grace, what comes to mind? Goodness. Compassion. Favor. Unmerited favor. Forgiveness. Okay. Mercy. Okay. Anything else? Jesus. No, nothing wrong, you know. No, of course. Because, oh, watch this, watch this, watch this. Because it, it encapsulates everything that we mentioned right here, so, you know. It is just that in different contexts, it talks about different things. True? Um, but, but all of what we mentioned a while ago, we can find places in Scripture where we are grace in that way. True? But really and truly, you know, when you think about grace, grace affects every single person, every single being, every single thing, every, every, everything in our life. Grace. All right, watch this. So you see, even the man who out of the road, we are robbing, killing. He ought to be grateful for grace as well. True? Because if I like me a God, <laughs> grace, grace. So, so grace is that unmerited favor that we cannot earn, nor do we deserve it. Grace, usually when we think about grace or talk about grace, most times we, 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 we talk about grace as it pertains to salvation. But grace doesn't only apply to salvation. True? Grace applies to everything in our lives. Now, you know in one of my books, I deal with um, the, the, the aspect of grace. In Dare to Contend, there's a portion there at the back that deals with, with grace. So I, I took a slice from the text, from the book, and decided to share uh, with you this evening. Because I've learned that sometimes when you, I mean, people probably read the book, and some persons don't have the book. And, and these things are actually in Scripture, because if you notice how that book is written, I'm basically just talking, just presenting this, the, the passages that deals um, that deal with grace, which is what I want to do this evening as we talk about grace. So I want to share five things about grace. I will pray. I will go home. Oh, that sound. That sound good. All right. So the first thing I want to note as it pertains to grace in scripture is, is the grace to enter. The grace to enter. So if you're taking notes, you can note it. When I say grace to enter, I'm talking about primarily, I'm talking about as it relates to, to, to salvation. That's the enter I'm talking about. But grace doesn't start at salvation. <laughs> True? Yeah, just, just, in other words, 
even people who, who have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is experiencing grace right now. True? Yeah. So it doesn't start at salvation. But I'm talking about grace to enter. Now, why I want to go there, if you remember the beginning of this study, which we have been doing for some time now, there is a particular group, and we're going back there because I want us to understand um, which, and, and, and when I talk like this, I'm not speaking to them in any demeaning way. I'm just talking because this is things that they believe and teach, right? So I'm not saying these people are not Christians or anything like that. That's not my point. No. Those who hold to a, a Calvinistic doctrine, they call that doctrine the doctrine of grace. You know that? The doctrine of grace. Now, I have a problem with that definition or description of their doctrine. Here's why I have a problem with it. And we'll come into this point. Because that particular doctrine presents the idea that, that not all can enter. Hello? The only ones who can enter are those who have been picked from eternity past. Selected by God for salvation. But the others were created for damnation. That not so like a <laughs> like a like a gospel of grace uh, uh, to me. Yeah, definitely, definitely. No. So even though it's called the doctrine of grace. When you look at the reality of what it is saying, it is not. So you might say, yeah, but it, has, it is at least grace to the ones who were selected from before. The, so it, 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 of course it is gracious to them. Yeah, to some people. So it is, it, 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 it is not true to say this is. Doctrine of grace. These are different descriptions. Because this grace is selective. And it is not applied to all. The doctrine of grace as we find, find it in scripture. Is when we read like John 3.16. Because it is open to anyone to enter and for anyone to come. For anyone to receive this life. Why? Because right now, presently, because Jesus Christ has been lifted up already on the cross and he promises in John 12 and 32 that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It means that even though we know that all will not come, we know any can come and we know some will come. Amen? That's the doctrine of grace that we find in Scripture. There's a portion here in, in the Bible that I want you to, to turn to or uh, uh, Christian will bring it up for us. It's found in Titus 2, 9 to 15. Very interesting portion of scripture. And it reads, it says, Exhort uh, bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back. All right, so I'm going to pause right there just to mention something. So you see, the salvation thing is not, is not a church thing. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to say it another way. <laughs> you see, you see, this salvation thing is not just lived out in the sanctuary. 
Salvation is not for the sanctuary. It is for ev wherever we walk, we talk, we live, we sleep. We so we carry Jesus wherever we go. Amen? So he's saying here that we carry Jesus got a workplace as well. <laughs> now, we're going to be practical with this. Because you know, sometimes we talk about grace. And I, I would have plug in the practical outworking of this thing. You understand? We talk, it's just churchy and it just comes like a Sunday morning thing. No. He's saying that, that this salvation lived out in obedience to God should impact or should be reflected in a week. We office at work among the co-worker and with the boss. Because in the same way that we would show respect to the pastor or our leaders at church, we should do the same to those who are our superiors at work. Amen? Can I get an amen there? So him said not answering back. Verse 10. So go to verse 10 now, Christian. So it says, not pilfering, <laughs> but showing all good. So, so no anki panky. No, no cheating, no stealing. That they may adorn the doctrine of God. You see that? That they may adorn. The word there that is used for adorn in the Greek, you know, is actually the word that is used for cosmetic. Hello? But here, oh, this is interesting. The word that is used here, it's not talking about being fake. It is talking about that which is put on to beautify. Hello? So instead of putting on the makeup to beautify the woman. Hello? That we may adorn the doctrine of God. So we really make it, it look real and, and look good. True? So it is talking about the practical outworking of this thing. It's so, because, because it will really look ugly if, 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 if we talk, if we lip it and we don't live it. And some people see we are work and them say, boy, if I that Christianity look like me, no need to be no Christian, me all right as me is. Yeah, why you nobody talk like that? Yeah. See, so in a sense, he's saying, he's saying, let us not be stumbling blocks to others. Right? Verse 11, listen to verse 11, where it says, it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. You believe it? You believe it? Me believe it too. It has, the, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. To all men. Now I want to speak to this verse specifically as it pertains to Jesus. But I want to go Old Testament first. Because we know that salve people get saved in the Old Testament too, you know. True? People get saved in the Old Testament too. And in the same way people were saved in the New Testament, meaning trusting in God, people were saved by trusting in God. The text here. Is saying grace was revealed. Grace brought salvation to all men. Not to some men. Not to a special set of men. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared 
to all men. Let God be true and every man a liar. Now watch this. So, so, so grace is very, very important as it relates to not just our everyday life, but specifically to salvation. When we read Ephesians uh, 1, Ephesians 1, 6 to 8, it tells us about the fact that it says, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Listen to verse 7. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his so it's, it is speaking to the riches of his grace. It is, the, it is the richness of his grace that has afforded us salvation and everything that comes with that. Amen? We find also in Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, you know that verse very well, where it tells us, for by grace are we saved, through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, so watch this. So it had to be grace so that no one can say, me have, me have a part in it. Me have a a plea may help save myself. And that's why <laughs> and that's why I kinda cringe sometimes when me hear some people insist that if you believe, if if you're simple, believe in Christ. If you receive Jesus' offer of salvation, then you're helping to save yourself. What nonsense. No. Because remember, when we read Galatians 3, you know, from verses 24. Uh, to 27. It tells us, I know I'm skipping with <laughs> some, what's working. Yeah, it tells us, therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. You see the purpose of the law? As our schoolmaster. To bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. So the, the purpose of the law was never to, to bring salvation, but it, it, it had some bringing to do but it was to bring us to Christ, not to bring salvation. The, we learned from James that the law was like, not only like a schoolmaster, as we find here in Galatians, but the law was like a mirror. The mirror will show you, the, no mirror. You see when me get up in the morning? You see when me see things in my eye and my mouth no look right and me go and me look at the mirror? The mirror no clean off, nothing with the pan. Nothing where me see. But it, 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 it exposes to me my state. Say me not look good. Say, say some cleansing need to take place. That's the purpose of the law. And the law brings us and points us to the person, the cleanser. The only person who can actually clean us up. But if you notice, verse 25, let, let, I'm going to read to 27. And this is important, this portion. It says, but after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Make sense? Because the purpose has been fulfilled. The purpose was to bring us to the master, to the savior. The savior has come, so its purpose has been fulfilled. It's not that it is destroyed or just done away with. It's because the purpose is fulfilled. Right? For you are all sons of God through, where you find the text? Through? Through? So we are sons of God through faith. It kind of sounds like what we read in John. John 1, 11 and 12. 11 tells us that he, Jesus came unto his own, but his own received him not. Verse 12 tells us, but as many as received, to them he gave the power or the right or the authority to become children or sons of God. So this is echoing the same thing. For you are all, all of you are sons of God 
through faith in Jesus. Now listen to this verse. It says, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now this is important. This is not talking about um, water baptism. This is talking about what we read in, in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. 12 and verse 13, where it talks about when we received Jesus Christ and we were put into the body of Christ. We were dipped into him. We were baptized into Christ. The word here, you see, usually people associate baptized with water. <laughs> True? The word actually means to dip. It means to immerse. Right? The baptism in water saves nobody. Don't take up no stone. Don't take up no stone. The <laughs> you see, if you see, if you don't have Jesus Christ and you're baptized, you just wet up yourself. Because you go down as a sinner, dry, and you come up back wet as a sinner, same way. Jesus Christ alone, his blood alone, takes away sin. But this is talking about being dipped into Christ. We have been placed in the body of Christ, as we find in, in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. There's a, there's, a, there's a passage that comes to my mind a while ago. I didn't give this one to, to Christian, but it, it moved on my heart to, to, to talk about it. So let me just mention it here. Um, it says, verse 24, chapter 3, Romans. It says, being justified freely by his grace. You hear the grace thing there again? Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. With the redemption there? In Jesus Christ. So if you're in Christ, you receive this redemption. The text says, whom God had set forth, Jesus Christ, whom God had set forth, to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. You see how this is applied? So even though this, this, this was offered to all, it was offered to all, the sacrifice was done for all, but not applied to all. Hello? It is only applied to those who, who believe, who trust him in faith. So it says, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, note this, that he, the judge, might be just in punishing sin, but still be the justifier of sinners. Sinners who have trusted in him as Lord and Savior. So you see, God now just play ease up, you know. God wasn't just pardoning sin. He paid for sin. He punished sin so that he could offer salvation to whosoever believe. Are you with me? So he remained just, but also the justifier of those who believe in Jesus. Hear this now. Where is boasting then? You get the question? So he's saying, since it is, that is just, receive, you receive this gift that is offered to you. You have nothing to boast about. I have nothing to boast about. So why is it that some people insist on telling us that if you receive this gift, you have something to boast about? You reach from there yet? Why is it that some people insist on telling us that, listen, if you believe in Jesus Christ, then you help save yourself? Nonsense. Paul says, where is boasting? Oh, you, you know, see the other part. Him say, it is excluded. By what? Works? No. But by the law of faith. So he said, the next time somebody buck you up and said something to you, 
just tell them that boasting is excluded because you just receive the gift by faith. But it's nonsensical to you know, because think about this. Think about this. Me desperate, hungry, and dying. And somebody offered to help me. I'm going to receive the food where I'm going to save my life. Then I can walk away and say, yeah! And brag as if I saved myself. I didn't need saving. Hello? It doesn't make no sense. All right, so let us move on. So what we find is that we find that God has given to us grace to enter. There are a couple of verses that I want to, 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 to mention. In John 1, John chapter 1, you know verse 14. Verse 14 tells us, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hmm? And we beheld his glory. The glory that of the only begotten son. Full of grace and truth. When you look at verse 17. Verse 17 tells us that. That grace came by Jesus Christ. It says. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No, I don't want us to, to, to misunderstand the point here. Paul is not saying that grace was not in the world until Jesus entered the world. That's not what he's saying. Because I'm mean, when we read Genesis, uh, Genesis 6 and 8, we read that Noah found grace. In the sight of the Lord. And there are others too who found grace in the sight. So it's not that uh, uh, grace, people only experience grace and Jesus. That's not the point he's making. The point here though that he's making is that Jesus Christ is the essence of grace. Jesus Christ is the essence of grace. I'm going to share something with you. You see, all of the people who get saved in the Old Testament, even before Jesus Christ came to earth, their salvation is still hinged on the sacrifice and the cross. You say, how comes? Um, how comes? And, and they died long before Jesus came. Watch this. Watch this. Their faith was in God. So they were looking forward for this Redeemer while we are looking backward <laughs> at the Redeemer. Right? They were looking forward for this Redeemer who was going to come in whom they would have salvation. But they trusted in God and their hope was secured. We, looking at what Jesus Christ did on the cross, and as, as, as bad as it looks, it, it, it creates this, this pulling effect on our minds and heart. And we said yes to Jesus Christ as we look back on the cross, a cross of love. Yes, of pain, but of love demonstrated for us. So he is the essence of grace. Because even though the sacrifices were being done in the Old Testament, as we find it, for many years, that was just, what we see in, in Scripture in Hebrews, was just a shadow of the things to come. As our brother mentioned, just the type, a shadow, the writer of Hebrews says. As a matter of fact, the writer of Hebrews make, makes it plain that the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. But it was just 
a picture of the good things or the better things to come, which came in Jesus Christ. Amen? All right. So, so what we find is that we see grace to enter. Yeah, that's the one that we do. All right, let us hurry on. So, we, we see also in Scripture, uh, there, there are two verses here that I want to look at. Well, probably I cannot skip one and look at the other one. Which speaks to why we need grace, you know. Look at Galatians 2 and 21. Galatians 2 and 21, a very interesting uh, verse. It says, oh, Paul, <laughs> Paul was making the point. He said, I do not set aside the grace of God. For it, another translation said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Make sense? kind of what we were talking about, about the Hebrew text, right? So he's saying, listen, I'm, 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 I'm not going to frustrate or set aside the grace of God and try to earn my way because I know I can't. Because if righteousness could have come from, if we could have done that, then Christ didn't need to come. Amen? And Christ would have died in vain. So, so, so in, in, in Hebrews, we find where it talks about uh, the grace and the goodness of grace. But I want to jump down to, to the, the, the second one. Grace to enable. So one, we see grace to enter. The second one I want us to look at is grace to enable, to enable us, right? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So God gives us grace to enable us because even though, watch this, watch this, because even though we have been given the, the spirit of God, Without God's grace, we will not walk in step, in line, in keeping with the Spirit of God. True? And it is unless or until we walk in the Spirit of God that we are able to live pleasing to God. That's why we are told, walk in the Spirit and we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. This says, for you know the grace of God. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Uh, bring up the, the, the second the second Corinthians 9 8 1 for me, please, Christian. This is the one I want to look at. Where it says, and the God is able to make all grace abound towards you. I want you to notice the words here. God is able to make all grace, you notice the all grace, abound towards you. That you, notice the always, having all sufficiency, in all things may have an abundance for you notice the they notice the emphasis so it is presenting to us say god have your cover hello god ha no I, I know somebody might be sitting there and say yo god feel you know my situation cuz Sometimes I can't find, um, I can't find, and the money little bit. So them all and all that we are talking about. Yeah. No, but we need to understand it. Watch this, watch this. I'm, I'm giving you this as broad talk. I'm a like, you know. 
God will never give you, God will never give me more than we can bear. No, when I say that, you know, you might say, eh, you don't know when I got you and it more than me can bear. No, sometimes it feels like that. Watch this now. So, so, so the load might be heavy, you know. But he will give you sufficient strength. Sufficient grace. Sometimes the grace is come in kind of people. To help you. To comfort you. Because he comforts people so that they will be able to comfort others when they are in need. Right? So, so sometimes the Lord really feel heavy and we need help. But the point he's making is that he has provided that help. It's kind of like the text we looked at last week, or was it week before last? Um, where we see in Galatians where we should help one another bear them load. Eh? So even though we have a responsibility to bear our own Lord, we also have a responsibility to help each other on our journey. Now, if it is that we could just do it on our own, then we wouldn't have verses like those. But because God knows that we... we so that in itself is a grace, you know, that God has provided. Uh, in, in sending the person just at the right time when you really did need a particular thing there. That is why last week when we were talking about the person in James, James called the person the hypocrite. The person who claims when the, when the brother come and check him and say, you know, I'm hungry and, and we don't have no food on the house. Yeah. And he said, boy, God is a provider. You know, come make a pray. James said, tap your prayer. James said, give him when I bread. <laughs> and, and then pray for our next one. Um, yeah, so so it's talking about the practical outworking of our faith. It's not a lip thing, right? So here, here, he's saying that God has our back. He will provide or he has. I mean, that fact. When we read First Peter, you know, First Peter one and three says the same thing in a different way. You know, that His divine power has given us everything we need. For life and godliness or good living. Every, eh, everything we need. His divine power has given us according to his abundant mercy. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Look, look, in, look at Second Peter instead. Everything we need for life and godliness. His divine power has given us. All things that pertain to life and godliness. No. No. So everything we need to live good has been provided already. Hello? Everything we need to live right has been provided already. So if me not live right, it's not because we need more things. Hello? Because everything we need, God said, he has provided already. Philippians uh, tells us in Philippians 2, 12 and 13, where it tells us that we should what? Work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Oh, it didn't say work for your salvation. It says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Why? For it is God who works in you both to will, both to choose, both to desire to choose, and to do his good pleasure. So God is at work in us, in you, in me. So guess what? Yes, yeah, so when we don't live out this thing, it's not because God not working on, in, in us. It's because we are, we are resisting God's working in us. Hello? 
if I'm not demonstrating this godliness that the apostle is talking about, it's not because God is not working in me. It's because I am quenching him or because me and I work with him. Because he is at work in me. Amen? So he gives us grace to enable us. And this is the enabling grace. He has put something in us. He has, he, he has given us not only this spirit in terms of a person, but he has given us power to do the things that we need to do as well. Hmm? We read even in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 that there is no temptation taken us. But as such as is common to, to men. But God will, with the temptation, provide a way of escape. So if me not take the way of escape, I my fault. But the way was provided. So you see, me go check Sister Shirley. I'm going to say, I'm going to check her for prayer. I'm going to end up not pray. But do other things when we need to pray about. It's not because the door them did lock. It's because there's, we never take another door that was open, that God had opened. You see, you see, if I don't take the door that God opened, I'm going to stay shut up with other, other doors. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because, you see, if I take the door where God opened, I'm going to say, I should make me do it. Or the devil made me do it. Amen? All right. So he gives us grace. To enable us. Right? Uh, we read uh, something in Hebrews chapter 4. This is a verse I like very much. Where it talks about, so, so, so we all have a problem though. We all have pressure. We all have uh, difficulties. And he's saying, he, he, he's telling us where we can find help. He's telling us what to do. He, he says that we should come before the throne of grace. But he tells us not just to come, you know. He tells us how to come. He tells us that we should come boldly before the throne of grace. Now, don't mistake that word boldly for proudly. It's not the same thing it means. Sometimes people come before God, before the throne of grace, proudly. Me hear some people say some prayer more time, and them are demand and dictate. Me and people, there's this new thing we are going on where them are command God to, what do you say? You never hear that? Where we are command God and we tell God, say, and, and we get some preaching, some teaching where we tell us, say, yeah, you can't stick him up on him word and command him. You need to go back to them preacher there, teacher them and tell them to me not do it. Because Master God and him alone are God. Hello? If no owing, no. I'm going to say this. Listen. You see, if God decides to not give you one more blessing, one more grace for the rest of your life, we have, we have enough to thank him for until we're dead. So let us therefore come boldly, not proudly. Boldly meaning confident. Confident not in who we are and what we deserve, but confident as it pertains to his grace according to his mercy. Confident because of his character. Hello? Confident not because of my conduct. Because if it is left up to my conduct alone, me not get nothing. Hello? One songwriter said, nothing in my hand, I bring simply to the cross. I him say, therefore, come boldly, come confidently. Why? Because we know the person we're coming to. And he tells us, come why? He tells us, come how? Well, first he's saying, come. Hello? 
First, he's saying come because sometimes we don't come. Hello? We go to, um, who we did go to again? <laughs> yeah, we go to different sources and, if, yeah, forget it started. Not true, Meta. Yeah. The problem there, and we need, and we find every other, and we don't look up and say, oh, God, me need you. Another one, you know. Yeah. So, first, he's saying come, and he's telling us how to come. And he's telling us what to expect. He's saying that if we come and we come humbly and boldly, we will find grace. Hallelujah. We will find grace to help. There is grace to help. Turn to somebody now and tell them, say, there is grace to help. There is grace to help. In our time of need. So in that needy time. The brothers and sisters. There is grace to help. And we can find grace. To help. If we come before. Him. Alright. Let us move on. So we look at grace to enter. Grace. To enable. Grace. To engage. When we look at, and here we're just simply talking about in how we walk, how we, how we, how we live. So, so, so like, for example, 2 Corinthians 1 and 12, where it talks about grace helps us to walk in wisdom. It tells us for as much, for a boosting is this, the testimony of our conscience. That we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity. Not with fleshly wisdom. Oh, there, there are two types of wisdom in there, you know. We, we find that in James as well, you know. James talk about the, the earthly wisdom and the wisdom which is from above. So, so he's making a distinction. and So he's saying, therefore, that... We, are, we have been given grace to walk in wisdom that can impact the people that we, that we live among, that we operate or function around. It, not in fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God and more abundantly towards you. So, so it helps us in how to, to engage. Up. Here's another verse that helps us to understand and appreciate grace to engage. Colossians 4 and 6. Listen to this verse. We read in Colossians 4 and 6 where it tells us, Let your speech always be with grace. Mm -mm. Good reminder, I know. Is it the right time for me to say this? Is, is it the all right time for me to say this? Can I say this again? Let your speech always be with grace. Me could tap ya so a minute. Sometimes you have to repent for that something you know. Because sometimes you see when me dey on the road. You should not glad so you don't live at town. Because you have some driver away in a town. They don't come a country. Some busman and some taxi driver. Them do anything them want up on the road. I was on my line road the other day. Driving. I'm going, coming from half a tree way. Just as you reach a stoplight there near the terminal. Bus terminal. So coming down on my lines. So you know the road. It's two way. So you know, meet up on my side of the road driving down. And when I was going down, I see a taxi man and my friend, him, a, a, a blazer come up. And you know, so the man tell me all kind of something. And I said, come up. You know him? You know what I'm saying? The man run me out of the road. Oh, me tell you, I'm up on my side of the road. Me tell you, there. 
I left on my side of the road and the man I met me know say, yo, come off of the road. No, there was nowhere for me to go, you know. Anybody here saw normal lines run? There was nowhere for me to go. The man is saying, move out of my way, cause. And me I say sometimes. You know, as good Christian, you can't say some things to them. You know. But you know, you think some things in your mind. But I don't mean only, you know. I don't mean, I don't mean only. Right? And you say, if him could have just go up the road, I want all the police to stop him right there so you see and give him all 15 tickets. But sometimes you, you wish more than that. Because you know what I say? He does not deserve it. But that's what grace is about. Grace is about giving this kindness for the people them really don't deserve. It's hard, brethren. If you agree with me, just go so no. Just go so no. You see, this grace living here is not easy, you know, brethren. Because God is going to tell me, say no. With all them, no. God has said, grace him. No, serious, you know. There's a portion of scripture. Very interesting, you know. In, in G, I was preaching at church there, uh, recently. And, 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 and James was making the point that, that those who judge or live without mercy will be judged without mercy. Jesus, Jesus. And to them, I think about it. And I say, mm -mm. then if. If that really happened the way they miss salt, you know. No real thing. It means that we have to be more mindful in dishing out some more grace. Dishing out some more grace. Yes, him not deserve it, can me not deserve it neither. Boy. Deserve it neither. So him said, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Now you notice the season with salt. You notice the, the, the analogy there. Because, you know, the, pur pur the purpose of salt, and you know, it has several purposes. And primarily, it is, is to give taste. Hello? It is also used, because in them olden times, them people never have no fridge like you. A pretty $250,000 fridge where you have a year. Because of them amount of money, they have a fridge now. So, so it, but what was used was salt. To preserve. No wonder Jesus likened us to salt. As he tells us in, in Matthew chapter 5. That we are the salt of the earth. And the light of the world. So we are here to, to preserve whatever morality is here. Whatever principle or standard that ought to exist. We are here to preserve not to maintain a culture, but preserve the good in the culture. To preserve the good in the context. And here, he's saying that we are to, to our speech must be with, with grace. So he said the next time, we are thinking for us, for us, we need for, for we need for us to dish out some more grace, brethren. But not thought like it easy, because we know it hard. Because every time when I think about it, I say they don't deserve it. And the Holy Spirit just fits me up back with it. I say, yeah, that's why it named grace. Because no, no, we don't deserve it. Because if we wait till them deserve it, it's not grace anymore. And that the words be seasoned with salt. And the analogy there is that we be able to share things, to answer in a way, to help, to bring healing 
not just to harm. The idea of, 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 of what the, the salt does is to bring about healing, to secure, to preserve, to mend, to help, and not to harm, but to heal. Or we are to enter. Let us hurry up. So it gives us grace to enter. He gives us grace to enable us. He gives us grace to engage. Two more are we done. He gives us grace to endure. Grace to endure. Look at me in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Very interesting portion of scripture. I know you know it very well. The text says, and he said to me, Paul speaking, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Let me remind you of the text. Come and know you are Bible people. Remember, it was a context where three times Paul went to the Lord about this thorn in the flesh. You know, say, I'm grieved sometimes when we hear people are trying to tell me what the thorn in the flesh is. Pastor, I'm afraid that them, I'm afraid that some of them preach here sometimes. Who, who claim to know the things that God did not reveal. You know? So it ends up that your guess is just as good as mine. So you think it's X and me think it's Y. You're going to tell me something wrong? You know? The good thing is, I'm happy, you know, boy, that's why God is wise and we are otherwise, you know. Because, you see, when, when, when the Lord left it like this, it's a good thing. So that he never tell me exactly what the thorn is. So it can represent my thorn and your thorn. Oh, you don't know thorn. And your thorn. It can, it can, it can, it. So I'm glad him not tell me what the thorn. So whatever it is. That is poking us in our life. That is bringing pain. We can bring that thing to God. We read a couple of verses earlier. Where, which talk about God will provide help. And in our time of need, don't it? And we misunderstand this text, you know. When we think. That boy, and every time he provide the help because see, he never really give um, Paul the help here. So, because a three time Paul go and Paul never get the help. Not true. That's a misreading of the text. Remember, he was on, he was he, he was in pain. Oh my God! Watch it. The fact that you're still in pain doesn't mean that God doesn't help. Hello. Hello. God was gracing Paul even while he was in his pain. What, what's the one we're looking at now? Grace to? Grace to? Grace to endure. Grace not to give up. It's good that we can see this being done in the life of the Apostle Paul. A man who was living for God. A man who was, who was even healing people. But yet still he needed healing. So you see that doctrine where some people talk sometimes and say, I'm a tough fact. I remember a guy got sick in my church. And and uh, two persons went to him in a rev and 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 said, I must have seen him sin. Because this is a sickness here with us come take him just so. I seen him sin. So you know, say I was so disturbed by that. So right away me tell him for ask. If then get sick too. 
Oh, you missed that a while ago. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Because they must not sin enough. Because if them ever get sick, or it's just as it applies to other people. You think we're easy in a church? I mean, in a town church. I mean. <laughs> so, but, he, but God graced him. God graced him in a rib. God was giving him that which he needed in a time when he wanted other things. Walk in the virgin. That wasn't what he wanted, you know. But God was giving him what he needed. So God was gracing him in a way that he wanted to be graced differently. Oh boy. I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip. Watch this. A pastor, the same pastor who got killed that you talk. I'm a bona fide friend. He came on my, my veranda one day. He came in with pure tears, crying, bawling down the place. Um, um, one of his friends just got murdered. But he just got saved. And I remember, uh, he said, you two, you so in the thing, streets and, you know, through them ears, him get saved now, them step and, and clap him. Right. So, so he was murdered. So he came and, and, and he, he just, he was just, because he was hoping for so long and we have been praying for the guy for so long. And just about six months in his Christian life. I mean, do you just sell us and and he was murdered? And I said, boy. Almost Christian in God and saying, God, how oh, come to go long? We are waiting for the man. Yeah. And, and, and we expect say, you know, boy, did I go keep him because, you know. And God laid a word on my heart. And I never forgot. You see, some of the times where we want, we want God to save some people's life while God wants to save them soul. Hello? You see, God, it wasn't God's in, in intention for him just to go down in, I'm not going to call the era, right? In that particular gangster era to take him out to save him life. For us to have him here and, and, and be happy that he's here with us to save his life. God wanted to save him soul. And God used you to rescue him. To say, come home, my son. God wanted to use Paul to teach you and I something as well. Say, no care how good you live. No care how obedient you are or how closely you're following the Lord. How much you're in his will, storm going come at your yard. Storm going come. The believers, the disciples were in the will of God when the storm came. Hello? And Jesus did tell them, say, yo, come, you go over there, sir. So that doctrine is not true. Say, so if we did that. No, he was in the will of God. And I say, this does this does a couple of things, and and I'm I'm going to close in in another five minutes. But my heart is racing with this one. Due to the perspective, the perspective is God. I want I want to be healed. This 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 it rough. I want to be delivered from this. Note the prayer. But three times he went to the Lord. And look at the response. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient. Say sufficient. It's sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect, complete, in weakness. Therefore, notice him response. This is what the Lord said to you my strength is made perfect, complete. 
You ever really can experience. It, it is when you're weak that you're weak. All right. So him say, therefore, what? notice the perspective before, you know. What, watch the man now, the same man, you know. Most, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmity. I walk one in my brain. I would most gladly boast in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is why the word of God is important. Because when we hear God, you know, you rev, sometimes we have a different person. All right. You remember the psalmist? The psalmist, the psalmist in a Psalm 73. Him daddy and him a grumble and him a complain. And him a say, boy, no, make no sense. Me live good. Oh, me live good. Now nah, look for me like a joke. A serious thing, you know. I don't know the text. He must say, it no make no sense. Me live good. Because look how me live good. And look for the wicked people. Them are prosper. Them are pure gold chain and big house. And look how we there. Boy, it no make no sense. I, I, I was going to tell the people of God that it doesn't mean. Vain. It's meaningless to live for God. Him say, my feet almost slip. Him say, me nearly backslide. It was too painful to consider. Hey, it, a long time or something there go on, you know. Where wicked people have, have holy pop. But him no remember the Lord, they tell him, say, yo, do not be envious of the, of the wicked. But watch the text. It's when you go round a verse, verse 14. The text says, but then I went into the house of the Lord. When I went into the house of the Lord, then I understood their different perspective. See the man here? See him here? Him say, yo, God. Him say, him say, therefore, I would rather rest in the power of Christ. Move to the next verse, uh, Christian. I want us to see something. Verse 10. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you no, that's not it. It says, therefore, I take pleasure. <laughs> I won't go on another man of brain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, my skin bump up. And the place not get no cola. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Grace to endure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, Second Corinthians. 8, 1 to 5. I want to read a couple of verses. Um, boy, I don't know. Listen to this. I'm going to just remind you of the story so I can save some time. It says, Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering of the saints. Listen to this. And not only as we had hope, but they first gave themselves. To the Lord and then to us by the will of God. You see, grace living starts with grace giving. But the giving goes beyond money. Walk with me. If you notice... They were gracious in their extreme poverty, you know. Look at the background of the story. Paul was saying, no, we are skip Uno, you know. We just are pray for Uno. Remember, they were collecting 
um, yeah, for the saints, the poor saints. We saints, <laughs> the, the saints who were struggling, who were so, them fit that description there too. But they must say, no man, we were helping up. They were saying, no, do rob, we are this blessing in Nepal. And Paul has said, whoa. All right, but just give me a little thing then, since you insist. No, he did not say it, in, in the, but you understand. But they went beyond what they were expecting. Why? How comes? Because they gave up themselves before they gave off themselves. Because you see, when we really give up ourselves, then it's easier to give off ourselves. And when we give up ourselves to God, then everything where we have belongs to him. They were able, watch this, to endure very difficult time and still be a blessing to others because God has granted them, has bestowed his grace upon them to endure in this difficult time. All right, one last point, one last point. Grace to end well. So we'll find that there is grace to enter, grace to enable, grace to engage, grace to endure. And now the final one is grace to end well. We find the story where the Apostle Paul, he was getting ready to leave. He was going to he was going to be around for much longer. And he said to the believers, he says, um, my time, my time come now. You know. And guess what? I've I've run I, I've, <laughs> I've run a good race. I've kept the feet. I finish my course. Watch it now. Therefore, the Lord has laid up for me a crown of life. Hmm? But, but, but the interesting part about that verse, you know, he's saying, and not only for me, but for all those who, who love is appearing. So, so for you to, for you to who have run a good, so he has given to us grace, not just to, 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 to enter this Christian life, not just grace to, to enable us to walk, right? Not just grace to, en to, to engage with others as we, we walk in wisdom. Not just grace to, to endure, but grace to end well. To end well. That we can hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Where the well done goes beyond the welcome. So it's not just welcome, son. But well done, servant. And we're looking for the day when this grace that we have received, we will be able to stand before God who has given us, gifted us this grace to say, well done, my child. Well done. Well done. The Lord bless you. <laughs> clap, clap, one. Put your hands together one more time and celebrate the man of God. What a, what a word. All right. So, so he did say we're kind of moving early tonight, but he will still allow a couple of questions if you, if you do have some. So, um, second mic is, is up there. So, if you, if you need it, and, and then I'll give him back this one just in case he wants to answer. Pastor, who 
Anybody? Questions? 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 I'm sorry, uh, Rev. I mean, it's at point number five, where you said grace to endure. Did you give a, give us a scripture there? Oh, the text. Uh, what's the text again? Christian, I think. To end well. To end well. End well. End well. Right. Uh, give them the. G give them. Yeah. Right. And on that, on yeah. that very note. Yeah. It isn't. Isn't it ironic that Paul would have said, um, not necessarily ironic, but Paul said at the end of his time, he said, I've, I've fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. I've kept the faith. I've finished my course. Henceforth is laid out for me a crown of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Yet in, in the end, Paul was like, well, he was telling people, come, come. It's as if he died lonely. Died lonely? Like he was like, mm -hmm. like everybody forsake him. Oh, there, there, there was a time when he was, well, he actually said it, when he was forsaken. Yeah. Um, and he mentioned the only person who actually stayed with him. So there, there, there were more than one time when he was actually for forsaken. It happened one time even with Mark. You remember John Mark? Um, yeah, and Barnabas, him and Barnabas get Paul and Barnabas catch up um, over it and things. So, uh, but I'm, 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 I, I'm not so sure I would say that he was lonely because he kept in, in, in different places mentioning the fact that, that the Lord, yeah, I know the Lord kept yeah. him and the Lord did this and the Lord was, you know? So he not, was not constantly... But mm -hmm. with the Lord because he was there, but I think when you consider... Remember, he was in more. prison, you know? Remember, he was in prison in the latter part when he was yeah. writing that, you know? Right. Because he, it was coming to the time where he was going to be, 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 be killed. Right. So he was actually in prison and he was just saying, hey, my time, no, you know? You understand? Mm -hmm. But he was still celebrating. If you look in the rest of the book right there, he was still celebrating, mm -hmm. um, anticipating um, meeting the Lord. Yes. You know? So, yeah, so, so he was not saddened. Yeah. yeah, he was, you know? So even though he was forsaken by some, he was still excited about this, this, this meeting with the Lord. Any other question? Oh. This was very clear, though. This okay. was very clear. Oh, that's very, no very question. clear. <laughs> and precise. Oh, uh, you know, uh, as we talk about grace. Yeah. Thanks Thank much, you, sir. Kevin. Appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. All right. So, so. I see the crystal hand up in that ear there. Right? You have a. Online question. All right, so coming with a question from you. Want the mic from down here? No, I'm good. Oh, oh you make your own mic. I'm waiting on her question. Um, Auntie Colleen. She so, has a question. So re Second Corinthians twelve verse seven. Can you expound on the messenger of Satan in that text? That's the question. Yes. So just to say something on, on, on this, and, and as I always say to you with my principle, um, I try not to go beyond what the text actually says. <laughs> right? So this text says that, that what was given to him was a thorn in the flesh given to me. And the description is a messenger of Satan to buffet me. So let us just say something on this. Just a statement there in terms of the description. 
um, is, is the reason why I don't agree with some people who, who would insist that it is a, a physical um, thing in terms of some say it was eye problem, some places say it was different, different sickness. The text says that it was a messenger of Satan. All right? That could be a number of things. That could actually be a, 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 a demon. So we're talking about possibility. The text doesn't say what it is. That could be a demon. Doesn't mean that he is given a demon, meaning possession, indwelling. In, that's not what this is. This is talking about to buffet, to beat. It's the same word that Paul used when he says, I buffet my body, I beat my body into subjection so that we make sure we run well. Remember, he was talking about um, not fighting as one beating the ear. So it's talking about, so he was being buffeted, beaten. So he was being impacted, right? Um, so who the, what the messenger is, we're not sure because the text doesn't really say uh, <laughs> All right, someone like that is saying Rev must leave. <laughs> um, so I, I was I was sharing with, with, with Chris today that you know this this all just remind me I was listening to a, a preacher talking about Joseph the other night, and I thought came. What if the butler had remembered that him asked for him to help him get out? So remember, if you get the story, he was in prison for two years more after the butler left. Suppose the butler did help him out, and he would have gone back home because I figured if he went to help him and he come out of jail, he would go back in the yard, no sir? More than likely, he would have head, head home. Um, Joseph in prison. Butler forgot him. But I'm saying, what if he didn't? By the time Pharaoh got the dream, he wouldn't be there. So what he was purposed to do, he would have missed it if he had gotten that help. Enduring what we're going through, the timing is God's. So you might beg for some help because you think, boy, this is too much, but we don't know. But then if he did gone home two years ago, then he would be in Israel. I'm hungry, kill him too. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is important. Amen, that is important. It's a great session we, we learned again. And so as we have learned, it is now for us to go out and live it. But, but teach some people too. Amen, share what we have learned so we can edify the body. Let's, let's, let's stand together and pray. Yes, the basket is up, so we... Um, if you took your offering, please don't, don't go back home with it. <laughs> Amen. So let's pray. Lord, thank you. We thank you for your servant, God, who has been faithful to come and impart to us week after week. We thank you for your spirit, God, who would have empowered him as he shared, even revelation, things that he didn't have on his paper. Things he didn't have in his plan came out tonight because, God, he was listening to you as you speak through him to get your word to us. We thank you that you have cleared up some concerns with the doctrine of grace. And we pray that, God, as we seek to live in your grace, may we also be people who demonstrate grace. We, we show it because, God, we have experienced it, and we are experiencing it. May our life, Lord God, be guided by the grace of God upon us, the grace to 
enter, the grace to endure, the grace to, to end well. May you continue, Lord God, to pour your grace on us and in us. That God, our life will show, it will exemplify that God, we are truly living by the grace of God. We thank you for the session. We pray that as Minister Garfield heads back to, to, to Kingston, we pray for journeying mercies. That God, you would cause safe passage to home. And that God, even his other engagements will be well. As you continue, Lord God, to use him for your glory. Bless the people tonight who are in the house, those who joined online. May you help us that God, what we have learned, we will now live. Help that it will be seen in how we carry ourselves. In our lifetime, like, like the man of God said, how we live out our, our daily lives. That the grace of God will be evident. We praise you. We honor you. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Bless you. Enjoy the rest of the night. And we shall see you on... We have meeting tomorrow for those who have meeting tomorrow. Then there is Rock Teens on, on Friday. And then there is, is, is women coming out Saturday morning. And then we shall all come back up in here Sunday morning.